discussing the particle-like nature of light, uh, you'll hear the phrase uh, particle-like or wave-like properties for uh, light and eventually electrons as we go through here. And uh, just to start, the defining characteristic of a particle is that it has mass. So if you are particle-like, you are going to act as if you have mass, whether you have mass or not. And if you are a wave, the defining characteristic of a wave is that, as we discussed in Roman numeral one of this lecture outline eight, then uh, when you are uh, run through the double slit experiments on a screen opposite uh, the source of the particles or waves, whatever, of the waves, uh, you will see an interference or diffraction pattern. So that's where we're going. We're talking about light right now, and we're going to talk about the particle-like nature of light. Now, uh, light and all electromagnetic radiation exists as discrete packets called photons, each with an energy. The equation is E energy equals H, which is Planck's constant, times frequency, and H is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. And uh, therefore, from this equation, energy and frequency are directly proportional and related by the constant, Planck's constant, H. Energy and frequency are directly proportional. As an example of a calculation, you could be asked to do, say, on the homework or an exam for the, ah, this used to be the 3G way back in the day. Now it's 5G. For the 5G cell phone network, uh, frequency equals 39 gigahertz, so we'll do it for the same frequency that we did in the previous video. What is the energy of this electromagnetic radiation? We have our equation for energy. We have Planck's constant. And we have 39 gigahertz, which we saw uh, a gigahertz was one times 10 to the nine hertz, and uh, one th which a hertz was uh, one over second, or a second to the minus one. So this 39 gigahertz became 3.9 times 10 to the 10 hertz, or 3.9 times 10 to the 10 seconds to the minus one. We can see that our seconds will cancel out, leaving us with joules as a unit. And we get 2.58 times 10 to the minus 23rd. Joules, an extremely small amount of energy, but you get enough of these uh, photons together, uh, or you get enough of these together, you will have, when you get moles of them, you will have enough to create some uh, nice energies. Let's talk for a minute about units here. So the equation gives you units of joules. We can also, since this calculation is done for a single photon, add units of photons, or per photon in this case, because this is the energy of a single photon, it is the joules per photon. Now, a photon has energy. The energy associated with a photon can move something with mass like an electron. And uh, this is a picture of the what's called the photoelectric effect. Uh, 
uh, for the photoelectric effect, when a photon comes into a substance, uh, oftentimes the substance is a metal because metals tend to have fairly loosely held electrons. When the substance comes in, if it has enough energy, it can eject an electron. So here comes our uh, photon with a specific wavelength. With a specific wavelength, it comes in. If that photon has enough energy, it can eject an electron. from the metal and um, a couple things about this so uh, photoelectric effect is this picture here uh, next uh, and we'll call this one we'll put it right there so a photon has no mass yet it can push something. And in this case, it can push an electron to move, to leave a metal. This is a photon's wave-like property. Uh, as such, the uh, energy associated with the photon can also break a bond. Uh, as an example, the energy of an oxygen, oxygen single bond is 146 kilojoules per mole. The question we're going to ask is, can a photon with a wavelength of 650 nanometers break an oxygen-oxygen bond? Uh, this question is uh, similar to at least one that you'll find on the homework, if not more than one, and potentially the exam. Uh, here's how we're going to approach this. We're going to have to find out what's the energy of this photon. We've been given wavelength. So we uh, have wavelength. We need energy. You can do it in two steps by taking uh, the wavelength and the speed of light, solving for the frequency, plugging that frequency into the energy equation. Or you can combine these two to get an equation for frequency here and then plug in for frequency in the energy equation to get a new equation which says energy equals Planck's constant H times the speed of light divided by wavelength and then plug in. Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. Speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We can see how our seconds will cancel. We can see that we want to end up with joules and we need meters in the bottom of this. We've been given nanometers. A nanometer is 10 to the minus 9th meters. Whether you put it into the bottom here as 650 times 10 to the minus 9 meters or 6.50 times 10 to the minus 7, those two things are equal to each other. And you can solve for the energy. Six point six two six to the negative thirty fourth times the speed of light divided by I get three point oh six times ten to the nineteen times ten to the minus nineteen. That's joules, that's the only set of units we get from this calculation, but as we mentioned just uh, prior. That is the energy of one photon, so joules per photon. So that's how much energy is in a photon. 
we know that it takes 146 kilojoules per mole, uh, and that's per mole of oxygen, oxygen single bonds. What we next need to do is find out how much energy is stored in one mole of photons to see if they can break one mole of oxygen, oxygen bonds. At least that's the approach we're gonna take. We have joules per photon. Uh, we know that's per one photon. If we're gonna get to moles, we need to use Avogadro's number. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything, but in this particular case, photons, equals a mole of that same thing. And then because we're in kilojoules, we'll convert joules to kilojoules. 1,000 joules equals one kilojoule. So start with our joules, multiply it times Avogadro's number, divide it by 1,000, and we get 184. per mole of photons, so yes, uh, because this number is larger than 146 kilojoules per mole, the photons, each of them will break an oxygen-oxygen single bond. Can a photon? Yes, because the energy in a mole of these photons, so 650 nanometer photons, is larger Uh, one mole of photons has enough energy to break one mole of oxygen-oxygen single bonds.